Let's do this. Vamos, 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 vamos. Hello, beautiful people. What is up? It's currently a Sunday here in New York, and I am in a snow globe. It's literally snowing outside. I feel like you look at the snow in a more endearing way when you look at it as if you're living in a snow globe. Anyways, hello, what's going on? I'm currently making some tea. This is chamomile and vanilla tea, which sounds just divine right now. So one of the most common questions that I get from aspiring UX designers is, can you show me your portfolio? Or can I see your portfolio? Or how do I make my first portfolio? And I, I mean, listen, I totally get it. It's very stressful. It's very overwhelming. I just remember when I was doing my first portfolio and I was for lack of a better phrase, sh my pants, because I had such horrible imposter syndrome. I didn't think it was good enough. I was constantly questioning what I was doing. I was constantly thinking, am I doing this right? I thought we would sit down together and just look and kind of giggle at, and also get inspiration from my very first UX design portfolio that got me my very first big girl job in UX design, which is in corporate and specifically e-commerce. Obviously, because it did get me my first job in UX design, my first full-time real job in UX design, it couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> I will also be sharing some things that I would be doing differently if I were to be starting from scratch or just from my lens as a mid-level UX designer currently in my career. Okay, I thought it makes sense for me to introduce myself. My name is Greta, nice to meet you. Of course, I'm a UX designer. I have been a full-time UX designer for about a year and a half, but I became a UX designer two years ago, which is actually when I created this UX design portfolio that I'm gonna show you. Let's talk about the creation process of my UX design portfolio. I actually am insane and a perfectionist. So I took about three months total to from start to finish from creating and buying my domain at gretalunapriego.com to actually finishing, completing my portfolio. I feel like my process of creating my portfolio was kind of like the UX design process because I started off with the research phase and that was two goals. The first part of the research phase was getting inspiration. So this is when I literally went on to different designers websites, their different portfolios, and just literally looked through them and kind of stalked them a little bit. I just wanted to get some idea of what good design portfolios look like. While I was doing that process, I was taking notes. So I was taking notes of things that I really liked about the portfolios and also things that I knew I didn't want to implement in my own portfolio. And the second part of the research phase was the blueprinting of my own past projects. This was literally like a scavenger hunt. I went through all my documents, went through all my handwritten notes and my notes on Google Doc and my notes on Microsoft Word and all my notes that I could find. I went through and just tried to find all of the specific details about my project. So this was the start date, the end date, the software that I use, the name of my team members, what the user or customer problem was, what the solution was, what were different sketches that I did along the way, what were some challenges that I ran into throughout the process. So I just basically tried to find all of that information and that was actually very difficult, especially if you don't document 
throughout the process of actually doing your projects. Highly recommend going above and beyond and documenting every single little detail because you don't know what you're going to need when you're actually in the process of putting your project on your portfolio. So the second part of my creation of my UX design portfolio was the synthesis phase. I took all of the information, all of the research that I had done up until this point, and I sat down with myself and I said, okay, what kind of portfolio do I want to create? What kind of atmosphere do I want to create for the person that is reading through my portfolio? Do I want them to think I am really artsy? Do I want to represent myself as a very logical designer? And this also included thinking about what tone of voice did I want to have while I was writing out my portfolio case studies? Do I want to be kind of funny? Do I want to be straightforward? And then the last phase, the hardest phase of creating my UX design portfolio was the design phase. This is just what it sounds like. It's the actual process of putting your case studies, your projects on to your portfolio. This is when the imposter syndrome really hit for me. I felt really stressed out. I didn't know how much information to put on my portfolio. I didn't know if I was putting too much information, but now looking back, it was a little too much information. Now let's move on to the actual platform that I decided to choose to house my actual portfolio. I decided to go with Squarespace. They're great. They're super easy, very reliable pretty responsive between mWeb and desktop though mine somehow didn't end up that way but that's probably my fault so first let's take a look at my home page screen at the very top I have a logo and honestly I don't hate the logo like it there could definitely be improvements but this was designed hand in hand with my sister Claudia she is so talented. She's actually a 3D animator and she lives in Vancouver. I kind of love it. I think it's really cute. And then if we look at the global navigation at the top, I have four different sections. I have YouTube, UX, My Story, and Resume. I kind of went with this golden yellow and like palish grayish baby blue situation. But looking back now, this golden yellow on the white background is so little contrast. It's not accessible at all. It seems kind of bad accessibility for a UX designer. So I think I would kind of make it a little bit more of a contrast. So the YouTube tab is kind of, is exactly what it sounds like. It is where I house all of my extracurricular work that I do. I think this is great. I definitely recommend to have some kind of like extracurricular tab on your portfolio. It just kind of shows that you have a life outside of work. The next tab is UX. So this is essentially the homepage of my portfolio and that's where I house all of my case studies. My story is, I was trying to be different. I was like, I'm not like, other girls. I didn't want to use the words about me because I felt like that was so overused at the time. So I was like, oh, how can I make it different? So I decided to name it my story. It's my story of becoming a UX designer and who I am. And then the last tab is my resume tab. And that's just what it sounds like. It's a place where employers can literally just go and download a PDF version of my resume. If we move a little bit further down, we have the hero image, which I still love this. Okay, like I'm not gonna hate on this. It's real cute. It was done in collaboration with my sister. She and I just kind of sat together and I was like, I really want to have an illustrative theme throughout my entire portfolio. I looked at UX design at the time and I still look at it this way as a conversation. I think good UX design creates a conversation between the user, which is the girl, and the machine, which is the robot, which can be like a computer, a website, an app, or whatever. I, I think it's very creative. I still love it. And of course I have my name and a little blurb, UX designer currently at the Home Depot, which is where I work right now. That is the first half of my UX design portfolio above the fold. So let's take a look at this grid that I have going on. So essentially, as you can see, I have this grid like pattern where I summarize or I give some kind of blurb about all of my case studies. The first one is about a mobile app 
Palook. The second one was supposed to be another project that I was doing at the startup that I was working at before I started working at the Home Depot. But that never happened because I ended up getting Home Depot early and I left this job. The third one is actually a mobile site redesign that was super fun to do. The next one is a skin supply store that I created on my own. This was a school project and it was essentially a website that I had to create, an e-commerce website where people can purchase something. So I decided to do skincare. And then the last one was, <laughs> it's actually my application to General Assembly, which is the boot camp that I did to become a UX designer. So I really, really was adamant about making it known that I was really into illustrations at the time and doodling and that kind of stuff. So that's essentially why I decided to make these summary images showing like the end product of the project of each project as an illustration. Looking back, I don't know if I would do this actually because in the real world when you are submitting deliverables and you're submitting final mocks for a project, you obviously cannot submit uh, a mock inside of a hand-drawn phone. So within each square of each case study, I have like a little tagline to introduce the case study. I would probably put a little bit more information on the homepage about each case study. I've seen some designers um, indicate which platform that this is for. So maybe the first one, this was a redesign of a mobile app. So I would have put mobile app redesign. And as for the number of projects that I have on here, I think this is great. I usually recommend entry level designers to have like two to three uh, projects on their portfolio. I think that's more than enough to kind of show a variety. If you can do three, that is even better, of course. Okay, so I'm not going to go into every single case study because <laughs> I will not do that to you. That would be too much to go through and I won't do that to me either. That'll be a little painful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into one specific case study and I'm just gonna show you an idea of how I structured it because essentially the way I structured my first case study is the way I structured every single other case study. So let's review my very first case study that I listed. Paluk is making photography on demand and affordable. So this was a mobile app redesign. Okay, and here we go. So this is Paluk. Just to give you a basic idea of what this project was about, I had a product owner. Uh, she came to me and a couple of other US designers and she had this app already created called Paluk. The idea of Paluk is kind of like Uber, but for photography. The photo lover, which is a person who needs to get their photo taken. This can be like a regular person. This can be a content creator. This can be anyone who wants their photo taken. This photo lover can book a photo taker, which is kind of what it sounds like, the person who actually takes the photo they can book this photo taker to come and take their photo either right then and there at the spot, they can come within like 15 minutes, or they can schedule them ahead of time for like next week on Friday or something. As you scroll down, I have this overview section. Now, this is where the whole part of the research phase of creating my portfolio really came into handy. Came into handy? Really came handy? Really came into play. Is that what I'm trying? I don't know what I'm trying to say. Essentially, this overview section was inspired by another designer's portfolio, and this is why I recommend definitely going to other designers' portfolios and getting inspiration. And I also have a contribution section. This is where you indicate what you specifically did in the project. And I think this is really only necessary if you worked in a team. If you worked alone, obviously, you probably did everything yourself, which is like, kudos to you you go girl and then I have an anchor link here and if you click it it literally takes you to the final MVP designs it saves a lot of time from someone having to scroll and find what the final designs were the second section of this case study is the discover phase so this is essentially the discovery phase or the research phase I think my main goal <laughs> and what was stressing me out so much is that I really didn't want my portfolio to be boring I could have named this the research phase 
which probably would have been a little bit more straightforward, but I was thinking, oh, maybe Discover is a little bit more interesting to read. Make sure if you are including more creative titles in your portfolio, make sure that they make sense and make sure that they're clear. I talk about what the challenge was that we were trying to solve, the process that we decided to use, that my team and I decided to take when trying to solve the problem. Definitely recommend not just having text on your case studies, because that, is not fun to read, okay? I go into this extended list of grievances. That is an example of a title that's a little bit confusing. It's kind of not easily scannable. If someone were to read that, they have really no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> and essentially there, I was trying to share what the product owner's asks were when the product owner came to my team and I to try to redesign her app. And then I have a section talking about how we'll measure success. I think this is really great. It shows that you really think about what success means to you and the project. And that's super important in the real world when you're working with your product manager, they're usually the ones preoccupied with the KPIs and that kind of stuff. But I think it's really nice to show that as a UX designer, you're still cognizant of those types of things. I even included like a freaking like mathematical equation. <laughs> I was very serious, okay? So the next section talks about the different types of research that we participated in or engaged in in order to kind of get a better understanding of the problem space that we were dealing with. And then we go into the testing phase. This is where we tested the current app as it currently stands. I really like this part of my portfolio and I do this a lot throughout my different uh, case studies. I have this kind of carousel here. I really like that I show which page of the app the users insights we're referring to. So if they if they gave an insight like, why is there only one photo taker? What if I don't like this particular photo taker? And I pointed out what specific page the user was looking at during the test when they gave us that feedback. So I think that's really, really nice. And then I have a summary at the end. I include a lot of summaries at the end of different sections. And I think this is super, super helpful because when you have a lot of information, it is a little bit overwhelming for the reader. So it's really helpful to have a summary where you talk about the major findings names from that part of the UX design process. Okay, moving right along, we are in the define phase. So this is essentially like the synthesis phase. This is where we take all of the feedback, all of the research that we have done so far, and we're kind of trying to get insights and understand what that information is trying to tell us. I also have some kind of diagram. This is the Eisenhower matrix, where it helps you focus on what's essential. So here, define Finding Palouk's target users. This is where I describe the user personas. Now, as a mid-level UX designer, user personas are a little bit controversial to me. They are great in the sense that they help you really summarize the types of users that you are working with, the types of users that are gonna be using your product. But at the same time, user personas are very limiting. They kind of put users in a box and not all users can literally fit in like two or three boxes. They are also based on stereotypes and not always based on actual hard data. I don't know how I feel about them, but it's totally fine. Um, I think it's very common to see user personas on entry-level UX designer portfolios because like I said, they're really good for just summarizing the types of users that you are focusing on, that you're designing for. And then I include a customer journey. These are great. They're really helpful for you to kind of visualize the essentially the journey that the user has to take in order to complete a specific goal and now we are in the ideation phase so this is the design phase i love this section it's another carousel it's the first pass of our redesign of the app so i labeled the designs and then i indicate which user problem that design element is trying to solve. It shows that my team and I were very intentional about which design elements we wanted to include and we were thinking directly about the user insights that we got during the user test. And then under that I have a picture of us with our product owner of the app and then one of my team members and I really like this because it shows us again like 
it, it brings a little bit of humanity into the case study when you include images. I talk about a little part of the project where we had to pivot essentially. I definitely recommend for you to talk about different challenges that you face during your project because if everything went smoothly and there was nothing wrong, A, that's very suspicious. And B, it's just not as interesting. It's more interesting when you tell the story of like, oh my gosh, and then this happened and it was crazy. We literally had to like be like, oh my God, like what are we gonna do? And then we came up with another solution and then it was like all fine. And it obviously shows your skills. It shows that you're a problem solver and all of that great stuff. Here I have another image of our second pass of our designs. It's very, very detailed. I probably would make the font a little bit larger. So this fifth section, evaluate, is essentially the part of the UX design process where we validated our designs with the actual users. And then if we move a little bit further down, I have the user flows. And user flows are hella important. You need to know how to create a user flow. You need to know what they mean. You need to know why they're important. So definitely, if you're not familiar with user flows, I'd recommend for you to read up on them, not just making a couple. I have it automated so that it swipes right and left. I don't love that because it's like, you can't possibly read the entire user flow in the amount of time that I have it set before it switches to the other user flow. <laughs> it's essentially showing the before user flow, before we redesign the app, and then the after user flow, after we redesign the app. So it's supposed to show the improvement, essentially. This bottom section here is ZMVP. As you can see here, I was trying to be witty. I called this section, let's hear it for the MVP, high fidelity wireframes. I have the final, final MVP designs that we handed off to the product owner. I really like that I have these questions above the final designs to point out how we were solving for the original user problems that we were presented with when we first started redesigning the app. I also have these two links where it takes you to Envision and you can essentially explore the app as each type of user. I don't know if these links are still they still work. I should probably check on that. The last section here on this case study is the backlog, future steps. I think this is really, really nice. It shows that you're not just like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. It shows that I like, if I had more time on this project, if I had more time to continue redesigning the app, if I had more money, whatever it was, I would continue with these improvements. And that is my project. Okay, let's quickly chat about what we just saw. So this project, this case study is very long. It is very, very long. I acknowledge that. And that's probably why it took me three, I was gonna say three years. <laughs> it felt like three years, three months for me to complete these, this entire portfolio because it was just so much information that I wanted to include. I'm very detail oriented and I think that's great, but looking back, I don't know if this is, hey, this is too long. This is quite long. I think it's very common for projects and case studies for entry level designers to be longer because I just feel like they have this need, which makes sense, like this need to really prove themselves from start to finish of a design of a, of a project. There has to be a point where you need to know what to include and what to take out. So if we wanna look at other parts of my portfolio, I have the YouTube tab. And here I have three of my favorite at the time, three of my favorite videos that I created. And then I have my story and I have this GIF here where I have a couple things that I love, like my cafecito, I speak three languages, I love music. So I thought this was cute. I literally remember my sister taking these photos for me. So I was like, okay, make sure I'm looking to the left and I'm gonna put like a graphic here and then I'm gonna look up here and then I'm gonna look over there. And then at the bottom, I have this cute section that says chat with me about, and these are essentially things that I'm passionate about. I've seen so many designers have these little sections on their about me page. And I think it's really cute because it just gives you an idea of who they are as a person what other things they're interested in. So that is it. That is her. That's my UX design portfolio that got me my very first full-time job as a UX designer at the Home Depot. If you are in the process of creating your UX design portfolio, you got this. It is stressful. It is freaking hard. And I completely understand 
the stress and the imposter syndrome that you might be experiencing. It's better just to get something out there and it's not gonna be perfect. This is not perfect. There's always gonna be something that someone can say about your portfolio because not just like universal guidelines, but I think also people have different preferences. That's how you learn, that's how you grow through feedback, through constant iteration. It's literally a UX design process. Your portfolio is just another project in and of itself. It's very meta. If you want to chat more about UX design and portfolios or just any other things in life, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'm always on there talking to people, DMing people, chatting about all things life. And as you saw my portfolio, I'm interested in other things in UX design. So if you want to see videos like that have to do with lifestyle, that have to do with motivation, productivity, uh, time management, or even just things like work from home outfits, which <laughs> I'm very passionate about, let me know because I would love to hear your feedback. My tea is gone and I have officially stared at my portfolio for way too long. So that's all I got, but I will see you in the next video very, very soon. Bye, besos.